50 tips, tricks, and useless trivia about Super Mario 3D World. Let's go! You can jump and walk on clear pipes instead of entering them. The roll move can break bricks and crates. You don't need a power-up. If you're playing with a friend, press both triggers on your controller to go in a bubble and save yourself from falls. If you want to complete the game at some point, get the top of the flagpole on every stage, as well as all the stars and stamps, of course. The miniature of a level changes depending on how much you collected in it. You can use the touchscreen or gyro pointer to stop enemies on the spot. This game and Mario 3D Land are the only 3D Mario games where you can't perform a triple jump. You can use the dive maneuver to activate switch and power blocks. Just use the dive maneuver a lot in general, it'll make the platforming that much more engaging. Let go of the run button when doing tricky jumps so you don't slide. Side flips are kinda hard to time in a pinch, so the best way to make a high jump quickly is a ground pound jump. The cat and tanuki suit replace some of your moves, keep that in mind. On the Bowser Cower fight, attack the bomb with the cat suit or jump into it to hit Bowser directly and deal triple damage. Super Mario 3D World has the most amount of power-ups in any Mario game ever. You can roll into bullies to kill them, so you don't have to time your jumps. Climb it with a cat suit will drain your stamina, only it's a tree, you can stay in the tree as much as you want. If multiple people grab out at the same time, they'll do a super grab out that can clear the screen of enemies. You can redirect bullet bills with the tanuki suit to destroy block or defeat enemies. If you do quick button presses, you can do small jumps from wall to wall in a corner and reach heights that you weren't able before. You can long jump from a walk, no need to run before, but don't expect to get as far. If you're running while holding a shell, hit the trigger to get inside it and go bonkers. Bots, kill enemies or get out of there after a bit to avoid getting dizzy. Do the infinite life trick so you don't have to worry about it later. Short in the description on how to do it. Ram pounding these disco blocks will light them up in bunches. Use touch controls or the gyro to switch panels without having to walk on them. A ground pound will make a Piranha Creeper retract much faster than just jumping on it. On Piranha Creeper Creek, there is a secret exit up here that lets you skip to World 6. If you see a clump of rocks in the overworld, there could be a secret there. Approach them and press A. If you ground pound into a pipe, you'll get a different sound effect and animation. Long jumping into a wall will bonk your head. But if you do it with a tanuki suit while holding B, you can avoid the bunk. Crouching will prevent you from being spotted on this spotlight level. On Snowball Park, there's a long path of ice. Keep rolling while you mash the crouch button to achieve insane speed. On that same level, get the secret propeller hut to use the spit glitch and launch yourself across the entire level. Toad houses will only reappear after you get a game over screen or beat the final level. Same thing goes for the secret golden train level. You can ground pound this face block on Grum Blump Inferno to make him mad and go faster, if you think that's a good idea. Combining Peach with a Tanuki Leaf will let you break the game by flying over everything. This is the game that inspired Captain Toad, Treasure Tracker standalone release. Once you hit Bomb Bomb, he will charge directly at you just once and never again on that cycle, so you can hug a wall, jump him once and then st stand still and be safe. You keep your collectibles when you die, making it easy to jump grab Kamikaze your way into completion. On the Wii U version of the game, you could blow into the mic to push these little Goombas, that's not a thing anymore. Long jumping onto an enemy will prolong the long jump which could be useful or deadly depending on the situation. The last 5 stamps you're missing are awarded when you complete every level with every single character. Octumbas need a ground pound to be defeated, while in Super Mario Galaxy you could just jump on them. Once you stepped on a fast path, there is no stopping until the effect wears off. When gaining power up, Rosalina will lose her ability to spin, so it's actually better to stay on power. 
If you reach a path that requires multiple people and you lost your double cherry, you can use other controllers temporarily. You have at least two with your switch. On Big Block Skyway, you can slide side to side on this part without jumping if you're really good at timing. You can either time pressing B at the same time you hit a bouncing pad to bounce higher, or do a ground pound, which is much easier. You can make these weird blocks disappear with a touch or gyro pointer. There is a grand total of one single stage in the entire game that requires you to use a touch or gyro pointer. Nice use of mechanics. And lastly, Champions Road is the hardest stage in any Mario game ever, and you can watch me struggle here on Mystic Player. Thanks for watching, you are awesome!